first film I've ever made. It, it was made literally in my backyard. Um, and I thought, well, God, what makes me think I can make a movie that somebody want to see about a, a dolphin hunt? And that became the most winning documentary in history. Uh, first film to sweep all the film guilds. But the important part of that movie, I think, is the, the change that it's created. Uh, somebody just asked me earlier, have you seen any change that happened since The Cove came out? And it's like, well, they're, they're killing two-thirds as many dolphins, two-thirds less dolphins. Um, there's countries around the world that are starting to ban the import of wild dolphins for dolphin shows. Um, if you follow what's going on with uh, SeaWorld, they lost $1.75 billion in their stock. That wasn't an accident. That's because Sea Shepherd, Save Japan Dolphins, EIA, we've been working behind the scenes for, you know, in the case of Sea Shepherd, 10, 15 years on this issue. My organization, when I saw Blackfish at the Academy Awards, and by the way, Susan Bart, who was executive producer of that, she became a vegetarian and a vegan after seeing our film, and that was, it was based on the the excitement that she had for our film that inspired her to do Blackfish. So there's all these unintended consequences of how you create tipping points. Uh, the cool thing, Malcolm Gladwell says, you don't need 51% of the population to create a tipping point. You just need a few people, a few key people, movers and shakers, the, the game changers. At Sundance, I saw that film and I said, you know what? We can help you. I've got a million followers online that are eager to help. They want to see this film, they want to tell their friends about this film, and we can, we can use your film as a catalyst to create this change. And on that, I said, uh, there's 10 major firms that were the backers of SeaWorld, the investment firms. We sent copies of Blackfish and the Cove to each and every one that sat on the board of directors. Three of those companies holding millions of shares of stocks divested after seeing those films. So now with the, this next issue that I'm work, working on is, is the mass extinction of species caused by humanity. Man, because I, I said earlier before, we're, we're in the verge of a sixth extinction. Well, I wouldn't go to see that film on a, on a Friday night. In fact, I would put that at the bottom of my Netflix queue. But I would, what I'm trying to do is make a film that people would actually want to go see. So when people say, you know, what's your film about? I, I, try, I try to avoid saying the extinction word, but I say, it's like the Avengers, but real. What's happening now is unprecedented in its history. Why would we want to disrupt something that took billions of years to evolve. We need to fight it on all fronts. I think it's dawning on us now that this is the big one. OPS is a group I formed. It uses covert operations to expose harmed and endangered species. We're doing an order here. One bottle cam. Right there's the lens. Two buttonhole cameras. Check one, two. Oh, that's good. Just about everything endangered in the world is for sale in China. Look at this stuff. Endangered, highly endangered, highly endangered. The more illegal it is, the more you have to go to the back rooms. We're definitely not welcome here. Oh my gosh! There's things going on that are probably not safe to talk about. We're dumping so much carbon in the oceans, it can't take it anymore. I found this guy, Mr. Lee. He's culling and processing whale sharks. Nobody had ever gotten a camera in there before. We run into people with badges and uniforms, oh strip God. off yeah. all this stuff, throw it over a wall. Is it a basking shark oil? Jesus. This world is absolutely insane. Wildlife trade is second only to the drug market in the world. It's that lucrative. We need a getaway driver. And I knew one of the best. I love it. To create a heist, to hijack the world's attention. I think we want to put in an order for a car today. <laughs> Excellent, we'll take one. Blow the lid off this place, right? We gotta go right now. There's been five major extinctions in the history of the planet. This may be the sixth. When you're talking about losing all of nature, it's not a spectator sport anymore. Everybody has to become active somehow. The idea is to inspire people. Life wants to flourish. DNA wants to go forward. We need to be part of that. People that have been in the business that don't even bother. But better to light one candle than curse the darkness. There's so many people who sit back and say we're screwed. But you know what? That one candle, maybe someone else with a candle will find you. And I think that's where movements are started. One thing we did that was really cool, I thought, well, okay, we want to see this carbon dioxide, but you want to, you want to put this in a package that really makes it interesting. And, I, and I'm very aware that on a, on a Friday night, on a date night, you're not, you know, you have a choice between Avatar and the Extinction movie. You want to make it, you know, we need to make it exciting. We need to compete. So what we, what we did is we took a perfectly good Tesla and we ripped out the interior. 
and we put in this 15,000 lumen projector in it, not of the frunk, that's what they call the trunk of a, a Tesla, we put this forward-looking infrared camera that comes out of the front. So it's like a James Bond car, and we actually, have, it will be the first car in history to have an electroluminescent paint job. It'll look like a cuttlefish underwater. It sort of ripples with this, uh, you can't see it in the daytime, you can't see it at night, uh, the, the, the paint, but it, it actually, we can change the color. So, you know, I, when I, the thing is, when I start talking about mass extinction, people, uh, you know, you know, sort of zone out, but when I start talking about the car, you see the kids light up. So the, the, the idea is, you know, the, the, the code was a result of watching too many James Bond movies and Jacques Cousteau specials, and this is an extension of that. Um, film and, and photographs can change the world. So in two weeks, on September 20th, put that on your, on your, your marker if you're, if you're living here in the city, we're going to light up the United Nations. Because on the, on the 23rd, 160 world leaders are, are converging on that building and including Obama, and they're going to be talking about what are the human consequences of climate change. And what we want to do is give a voice to the other 8 to 30 million species on the planet, we don't even know how many there are, that don't have a voice. So we're going to be using that entire facade, like the 500 foot front and that 500 foot tall vertical bit, and we're going to be putting, I don't know how many, like, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of lumens of light on that to, to uh, turn the United Nations into a beacon for endangered species, because most people, how many people in the audience knew that we were on the verge of a mass extinction? I mean, so about half, you're a pretty informed group. But I'm, I'm guessing out there in the real world, probably, you know, 99% of the people on the planet don't realize that. So what we want to do is create this beacon. Now the other thing that we're doing is like, that's a cool building, that's an important event. Um, but we want to create a, a really iconic image. You know, I'm all about taking a still photograph and so use, trying to find something to try to create a moment that makes it the next day so everybody's changed. You know, Sylvia's been talking, I've heard her talk for the last 10 years about all this, but like, how can we get Sylvia Earle's message out that's not on a, a Netflix, so you don't have to put on a Netflix queue, so you don't have to watch a 90 minute movie, or my movie for that matter. So what we want to do is, is put endangered species on the Empire State Building. Like, you know, a thousand foot tall images, video and images of a species that are just hanging on by the brink. Chris, who you'll hear in a minute here, um, when I first met him, he, he, he played me the clip of, a, of, a, of an OO, a male OO. It's a bird that mates for life where she sings a song and then he sings. And he was, was only playing the male side of the song. And he said, you know why? He said, that's, that's the last male of the species singing for a female that will never come. This is going on, some people say, up to 30,000 times a year. This is going on where, where humanity is completely oblivious to it. So that, that's what we, we do at, uh, at OPS. We try to, to scale things up. It's all, to me, about scaling it up and getting not just tens of thousands of people or millions of people, but let's try to do something that, that hundreds of millions of people can be affected by. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.
200 years, people will look back on this particular period and say to themselves, how did those people at that time just allow all these amazing creatures to vanish? But it would be very little use in me or anybody else exerting all this energy to save the wild places if people are not being educated into being better stewards than we've been. If we all lose hope, there is no hope. Without hope, people fall into apathy. There's still a lot left that's worth fighting for.